Okay, hello everyone. So today I'm going to be filming a video showing you how I take a ready-to-wear garment, make it into a pattern, and then sew it up. So I'm sure you have a lot of clothes that you love to wear and you would love maybe them in another colour or a different fabric. And I always find that when I find a piece of clothing I really love, I want it in like every colour and I want to be able to wear it <laughs> every day pretty much. So for me, it's these pants. So these pants I got from Uniqlo years and years ago and they've done they've done their time. They've, they've lasted a long time. Um, I've got two pairs of these. One of them is getting holes in it and it's just it's time for that pair to move on. I'll probably try to mend it rather than just throwing them out. Um, but I thought I wanted to make another pair up. So they're these stretchy kind of like legging pants um, but I like that they've got the classic features that jeans have kind of makes them just that little bit nicer than just a pant um, than just a legging I mean um, so yeah I'm gonna try to take these and turn them into a new pair of pants um, and the fabric I'm gonna be using is this so it's just kind of um, a herringbone check and it's got a very subtle um, wine colored stripe in there the rest of it's just black and white so what you need to do this is a pair of clothing that you want to copy so for me it's these pants um, if your piece of clothing is a bit beyond wear and you're not going to mend it then you can do all of this by actually cutting out the piece of clothing along each seam line and then that will give you the pattern minus the seam allowance that's probably the easiest way to do it because then you're not going to have to make sure you're holding things straight you're not going to have to fiddle around as much if you have something that is ready to be thrown in the bin and can't be salvaged in any way you can actually just cut around it and then that's going to be a hundred times easier but in this I'm going to show you if you want to keep the garment already made up and you don't want to have to cut into it I'll show you how to copy a pattern off that the other thing to note is what type of fabric is your piece of clothing made out of. This is actually made from a knit, I believe, just based on it's quite stretchy to a stretch. Having a look at it, it has got kind of a twill um, pattern to it, but I think it's a twill knit, not a woven. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, and if you're new to sewing it will be harder to tell. Um, I would actually suggest if you're wanting to copy it maybe take it into the fabric store with you and ask them their suggestions on similar fabrics and also that way you can feel how it stretches how it falls in comparison to the fabric before you buy it um, this is important because it's going to change how the garment's going to fit so if i made these in something that wasn't stretchy it probably wouldn't pull over my hips and it wouldn't fit um, this needs that kind of stretch in it now that being said I am actually using a woven fabric for this so there's not going to be as much stretch um, going lengthways down the body but there will still be heaps going across the body and to me that's more important um, so this fabric hasn't got much stretch this way but this way it's got heaps of stretch um, so this is just a woven kind of suiting weight fabric it's a similar weight to this one um, but yeah it just doesn't have that sideways stretch a uh, long way stretch sorry it only has it going around the body which I'm okay with and I'll probably end up making the pants a little bit higher this is because one I like high waisted pants and these are actually more of a low rise and with these ones I find I can kind of pull them up because they do stretch but without that stretch going up and down the body I'm not going to be able to pull it up without hurting myself <laughs> so yeah so you need pants or whatever garment you're copying fabric that suits the type of fabric the original garment was made in and you also need some tracing violin so this is a really really lightweight violin you can see through it it's brilliant for this type of job you can also use butcher's paper or tracing paper or um, pattern paper if you have it i find pattern paper can be hard to find in rolls you can often get folded sheets but personally i think they're kind of a waste of money you never get enough paper in them in my experience and i just don't think it's worthwhile when something like this is usually only a few bucks a meter um and you can see through it it does the exact same job so it's cheaper 
I like it just as much. So this is what I use when I'm pattern making most of the time. Um, so that's what I'll be using for this today. Other than that, you'll need just your usual scissors, pins, a sewing machine. One thing to note is on your garment, look at how things are stitched together. This will tell you if it's going to be something that's going to be possible for you to sew with the machines you have or not. So something like this has been straight stitched and then overlocked on the inside seams. So I have an overlocker and I have a straight stitch machine, so this will be easy enough for me to do. If you don't have an overlocker, you can use a zigzag stitch instead. So keep that in mind, wherever you see overlocking on any of your garments, you can use a zigzag instead. The other thing this has is a jean button, so I'll need to make sure I get one of those too. It doesn't have any zips or anything, but it does feel like there's elastic in here. Um, that's the other thing when you're doing this. You need to kind of dissect the garment a little bit, not actually literally pull it apart, but feel around and see where there's differences in the garment. So I can feel that this is quite a bit thicker and it does feel like there's a little bit more kind of stretch or something in there. I think there's probably a band of elastic that's been added in the waist. You can also kind of tell how it curls in a little bit and gathers in. That's telling me there's probably elastic in there pulling it in tighter. So yeah, all of these stitching on this garment is either overlocked or straight stitched. There's nothing too fancy. Even though it is a stretch garment, which does surprise me, I would have thought they would have used stretch stitches more. Um, but obviously because it's not high, high stress stretch garment, like swimwear or something, they haven't done that. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to copy these. Okay, so I'm ready to go. I pre-washed this fabric. I suggest anything that has a natural fibre in it that you need to pre-wash that because it will shrink the first time you wash it, but after that it won't shrink anymore. So I'm just going to pop that aside because we don't need that right now. Okay, so I'm going to cut a piece of the tracing violin that is long enough to fit in this pair of pants. So... It looks like the length of this roll might just do it, so I'm just going to cut one that's a little bit wider than one of the legs. Okay, so I've cut a piece of tracing violin. I've also got my pins and I've got a pencil. It can be helpful to have pattern making rulers on hand. Um, the French curve is good because that curve is really nice along the hip line. So if you have anything with curves, they're really good to make sure that they're a nice curve and not too wobbly. Same if you have any straight lines, a ruler obviously is going to help you do that better than just your hand. Okay, and now I've got my pants. So I'm going to start with the front because I think that's going to be the easiest because it doesn't have the yoke portion at the back. And I hope you can see this all right because I do know that this is a dark color so it might not show up on camera quite as well. So what I'm going to do is lay this flat. Now what you want is for the piece that you're going to be tracing to be flat. It doesn't matter if the rest of it is bunched up or out of the way as long as this piece is flat. And with things like pants it's quite possible because they've got this like curve at the crotch and everything that the other legs going to have to be kind of bunched out of the way in order for that to be sitting super flat. So I'm just going to pull this across and make it all sit nice and even. This is where it is handy if you can cut this apart because obviously if we cut all along these seams we wouldn't have to fiddle around trying to flatten everything out. It would just sit flat because that's how it wants to sit. Okay, so I've got that laying pretty flat. And now what I'm going to do is lay my tracing violin over the top and I'm going to pin the tracing violin on to the bottom. This isn't incredibly important. You can use weights or you can just leave it. But I find if I leave it and then, you know, I got get up and it might move a little bit, it will wobble it out of shape. So I'm just going to go around and pin. And I use these really nice, sharp, fine pins. So I know they're not going to damage my garment that's already made. Now we're going to start tracing it out. What's important here is that you're tracing around just the panel or the piece that you're wanting to, not around the whole garment. So I'm not going to be tracing right on this edge because that's not actually where the front pattern piece starts. Front pattern piece starts in here. So that's where something that's see-through can help. And if you can't see, either move it back and double check that you're tracing in the right spot. 
that's where the pins help because you know that this isn't going to shift as you're moving the violin around. Um, you can also feel it. I can feel that there's the ridge of the seam here. It's quite an obvious seam in this fabric because it is a bit bulky and I can feel it here as well. So I'm going to go around and trace that all around the crotch as well and up around the waist and the hip. I suggest using a dark pencil for this. You're just going to be able to see it a bit better. Don't use a Sharpie and don't use a pen because if it bleeds through, then you're going to end up with pen and Sharpie all over your piece of clothing. Okay, so I've traced that out. I'm now going to unpin it and have a look at it without the pants underneath. Okay, hopefully you can see that all right on camera. So I've got the crotch curve here and then the legs, pretty basic, simple shape. Okay, up at the top as well, there is this little pocket detail which isn't actually a pocket. It's just a stitched down panel to make it look like there's a pocket there. Um, so I've just copied that onto here and then I'll trace that bit off. It won't actually be cut in one piece. Um, similarly, there's a fly piece which isn't actually a fly piece. It's just been stitched on there. Um, so this piece actually it feels like is an extension on both sides. So this pattern piece will actually come out and mirror this shape on this side. So I'm going to do that now. And then when you stitch it, you fold it under and stitch it down flat. So it looks like a fly, but there isn't actually a zipper or anything there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip that out there. I'm just going to do that by folding this in half along that straight bit of the crotch seam. And then I'm going to copy that onto this side. This is where dark pencils are preferred. Um, so I'm using a using a 2B I think. 3B? 4B? I don't know. I can't read it. It's, it's scratched off. But something larger than like an H or anything like that. So then we can see that on the other side it's going to be sitting out like this and then that's something that we're going to fold over when we're stitching. So that's where it's important to have a really good look at how these are put together. So I can also see they've kind of curved this bit off. So I'll do the same here. So that's a bit there. So they've kind of gone, they've gone a little bit more like this shape. So it looks a little bit funny. <laughs> it is a little bit funny. That's how they've made it. And that'll make sure it's gonna sit in a similar way and have the same kind of styling that I'm after. So now what I'm gonna work out is where the green line on this is. Um, and also I'm gonna tidy up the lines and add seam allowance. Now the grain line can be worked out by looking at the fabric. Um, make sure you have a good pair of glasses on so you can see it or you have 20-20 vision. It is kind of hard and it is harder in fabrics like this that so would have a twill weave or something in them. In general, they're going to just be running straight down. Something like this. This is a really basic shape and I know from pattern making, from sewing, grain runs down the bottom. Okay, my camera stopped recording. I don't know why, but <laughs> I'm just adding the grain line. So I've just found the halfway point between two different areas and I'll just draw the line up there. Generally, it's just straight up and down the body. So then I can call this Uniqlo pant front. And I know that I need to cut one pair. I find it important to write that information on there just in case you want to make this again. You have it all there. You don't have to come back to it later. So what I'm going to do now is add seam allowance. I like a one centimeter seam just as a general rule. That's just what I prefer. I find 1.5 is always too much and I really hate how it looks on the inside of garments. But you can add whatever seam allowance you feel comfortable with. Um, also depending on how the seams are finished. If it's a French seam, you probably want to add one and a half because you're going to be cutting that down. Um, so yeah, I'm going to add that all around. And what I'm also going to do is add a little bit of height here. I think I'll probably add maybe even five centimeters, which will be a bit. All I'm going to do is kind of follow these lines straight up 
and follow the shape that they're making kind of like that but I'll do it with my ruler to make sure it's all going up the same length and then I'll add the centimeter seam to that as well so the only way I'm not adding a centimeter is at the hem they've done a rolled hem or so they've folded over once and then over again and then stitched it down so that would be two centimeters there I'm also going to add two centimeters not necessarily because I want to copy this finish but because if this length ends up not being as good because I don't have the stretch going down the body, if it ends up being maybe a little bit shorter on me because of that, then I have that extra length to allow for the hems to maybe be a smaller turn up but still be nice and long on me. So if your lines are particularly wobbly in any areas, you know it needs to be straight, you can straighten it out with a ruler first before adding the seam. Or if it's a curve, like here it's looking a little bit, little bit wobbly, a little bit not perfect. I can grab this, try to match up the shape and just draw it out before adding that seam allowance just so there's a nice smooth curve there for me to follow for the seam allowance. Now I use this grading ruler when I'm adding seam allowance because it has a grid on it and I can easily see where one centimeter is away from the line that I'm laying it over. You don't need one of these rulers, you can just use a regular ruler. It just might take a little bit longer because you've got to mark it in multiple sections rather than being able to do long, continuous lines like that. Okay, so I've added the extension up here so that it's a little bit more high-waisted. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to move this pocket piece up as well because this is going to end up sitting really low down. I'm going to have a really long fake pocket um, that'll just look a little bit weird and it'll throw the design off. So I'm just going to copy this shape exactly and move it up here. With the fly as well, I'm going to extend it up all the way to the top. But I might also bring this up so there's a little bit more room at the bottom for the crotch curve and the fly sits just a little bit higher up. I'm doing most of this just by eye, so like this curve, I'm just going to match it up kind of to this shape. I can see it's sitting between the 65 and 74. Move it up here, sitting between 65 and 74. And then I can just do that, and that's nice and easy. And this as well, I'm just going to really do this completely by eye. So again, I can fold this fly bit in half so that I can see how it's going to sit on the finished garment so I can see it's going to sit just fine maybe bring that over a little bit just so it continues the same width all the way up and then I'm going to add the seam allowance to these new high waist now I'm actually quite interested to see how they did this pocket because it's quite a steep curve Usually for something that's steep you'll have a facing, but it looks like they have just folded it back. It is really hard to tell on this garment because they've covered it on the inside quite well. But I'm thinking they probably just turned it back and because it was a stretch fabric they were able to manipulate it with an iron and press it into place. So I'm probably going to do something similar. I may end up cutting down this seam or cutting into the seam to make it fit better. Okay, so that is the front pant done. Now what I'm going to do is do the exact same thing but with the back. And on the back, what I'm going to do, because it's got this yoke piece here, I'm going to do the same thing I did here with the pocket piece and copy this in one piece and then I'll trace this out later and have it separate. I'm also not going to move this line up, unlike the pocket where I moved it up to accommodate me adding height to the waist. I will keep this long because that's actually quite common in jeans that the yoke is a little bit young, longer than this. This is quite a short, narrow yoke. I'll also make sure I copy off the pockets as well. They're a really basic shape but I'll keep the same shape and also the same placement so I'll make sure to mark that on the back piece too. Okay. Sorry, I got interrupted. So the only other pieces this has is the belt loops, which is just little rectangles. I might end up not even adding belt loops. I'll see how I feel. Um, just because I don't really use them ever. Um, so they're kind of a pointless detail to have for me. Um, and then the waistband. So the waistband is just going to be a rectangle. And because I've altered the 
size of this because I've moved it up a little bit which will have shrunk it in. Um, I'm just going to measure the top of the waist at the front and then the back and then add those together to get the size for the rectangle and then I'll add seams um, as well to that and that will be cut on the fold and the fold will sit at the back and it will come around to the front like it does here. So I'm going to trace the rest of those off and I'll get back to you once I've traced them off. Okay, I'll just note as well, I'm just copying off this little pocket piece. This is just a really tiny piece and this is going to be a lot harder to add the grain line to. Um, what basically the grain line needs to be is it needs to be the same as what the pant is. So because I've got this exactly sitting over the pant, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace a line extension up from that grain. So I've got a straight line on that and I know that's the grain. Obviously that's not very helpful where it's sitting on the piece right now. It's sitting way over here. But what I will do is then I'll grab my ruler which I can create another straight line from to copy it onto the main piece of the body. So that way it's still got the grain on it. A, pa a piece like this isn't as important in terms of grain line um, because it's not going to change how the body of the garment hangs it's not really going to change too much about it but it is good to know because it will affect things like the yoke at the back um, so I'm going to do that in the same way I'm going to copy the grain in the same way okay so I've run into a problem here with the back I can't actually have it all laying flat because the seam wraps around to the front so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten it out as much as possible so in this case I flattened out this side and I get quite a bit of the curve and I get this whole side and most of the hem. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark where I folded it here with pins just so that I don't lose where that line is. So all the way up to the crotch curve. So the rest of it I'm going to be able to trace pretty well. Um, it's just that bit that's kind of tucked on the inside there that I'm going to need to trace in a secondary way. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put some pins in here to hold this in place. Okay, and so I'm going to trace all of this. And when I get to this edge, I'm going to still draw this line and do it as a dash line. And then when I finish tracing the rest of it, I'll unpin this and then flip the piece over so that I can trace the remaining of it. Okay, so I've traced out the leg and I've put where the pocket place is and also the yoke. So now I'm going to unpin this and just move it out of the way for now. And now I'm going to keep all the pins in this piece. Try to keep it as flat as possible and not to move it too much. And so then this is the remainder I have to copy onto this pattern piece. So lining it up with the line I drew before. may not be perfect. Um, that's just how these things are, <laughs> unfortunately. Make sure that's really flat. Yeah, it may not be perfect. Um, that's just how, unfortunately, this method isn't perfect. Um, but it gives you a pretty good idea of the shape of the garment. And if the more you sew, the more you'll be aware of how crotch curves need to look, how sleeve heads need to look, um, and how armholes, any of those trickier curves, you can kind of probably see maybe you've traced it wrong because it's looking a little bit out of shape. It's looking a little less like how you're used to. Um, and that's okay. You can tweak it. Um, that's where it is a really good idea to do a twirl. So you can check the fit and check the shape, check that all the panel lines are in the right spot before you sew it up in your good fabric. So I've just pinned this in place and I'm just going to trace off the remainder of that back piece. Okay, my camera cut off again. It seems to keep doing that. I don't know why. Um, but so that's the faint line where the piece needed to be folded and I've traced out the extra bit of the back there. So I'm going to go ahead and just straighten up a few of these lines like the hem's a little bit messy and I know that's pretty much just going to be a straight line there. And this curve here at the crotch where it joins just a little bit off. So I'm just going to take my French curve, just make that look a little bit neater. So French curves are great because they have 
kind of all the curves you need and it does vary around here so just try to find one that matches similar shape so that's perfect and what I'm going to add, do is add the five centimeters up here so I'm just going to kind of follow the same line that is following and add five centimeters and same with the back here this is following quite a straight line and just keep it up oh just enough and then see if this is curved yeah so this has a little bit of a curve to it so I'm going to copy that curve up here and what I might do is this yoke is looking quite rectangular um, whereas the yoke usually comes up at the side and more into kind of a V shape at the back so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to straighten this off and just create a new yoke shape there and that'll kind of create more of your classic jean look yoke okay so I'm going to add seams to this and also add the grain line in the same way that I did before and I'll trace off the pocket, trace off the yoke, and then I'll just need to make the waistband. Okay, so I've got the front, the back, the yoke, and the two pocket pieces. So now it's just the waistband. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to measure this length less the fly length because that is gonna be folded under. So this length plus the back length as well. And I'm gonna add those together and create a rectangle. So the rectangle will be that length long and double the height of the elastic I have. So the elastic I have is two and a half centimeters. So it will be five centimeters tall. So my rectangle is going to be 31.7 by 5 and then I'm going to add one centimetre seam along the long edges and one of the short edges because the other one will be cut on the fold. And the grain line on this again is just going up and down the body and because this is a rectangle it's nice and easy, it's just perpendicular. Okay, so I'm going to cut all these out and then lay them out on the fabric. Okay, now we get into the fun part, cutting it out. So I've got all the pieces here and I'm going to lay it out on my fabric. So I want the stretch to be going around the body. Now this fabric is actually a bengaline, so it has the stretch going the wrong way, which means I'm actually going to be cutting this with the grain line of the pieces going against the grain, going on the cross grain perpendicular to the grain. So that's fine with a fabric like this, like a bengaline, because it's not going to change how it hangs. Generally, you follow the grain of the fabric with the grain on the pattern. Um, this would just be the only kind of exception to that. So I'm going to lay all this out. And because this has a check on it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out the front piece first. And then I'm going to take the small pieces, so like the front pocket, and I'm going to lay it over where it will sit here and then I'm going to mark where the check is on that and by marking the check on that um, on the actual piece I can then place it where that check is on the fabric and that way when the pieces get joined together the checks all match I'm going to do the same thing on the side seam of the back I'll lay down the front piece then I'll grab the back piece lay that on top and then mark where all the check lines are so that all the check lines are matching all around the body. So I'm going to do that for all the pieces including the pocket and the yoke. This does require more fabric if you're going to do it this way if you have a check or a stripe that you need to match but it has that more professional finish to it. Um, ultimately it's personal preference. Sometimes I don't bother doing this um, especially if it was more expensive fabric maybe and I didn't want to buy as much um, or it was a remnant and I didn't really know what I was going to do with it until I got it home. So I'm going to lay these pieces out now and cut them all out. And don't mind me just watching How to Get Away with Murder in the background. <laughs>
Okay, I've cut all the pieces out. So now what I'm going to do is mark the pocket placement on the back and also where this fly fold is on the front, just so that it gets folded in the right place. Um, I might also just put a notch at the top there to make it obvious. And then I'm going to start sewing it all together. Okay, so I'm going to start sewing these together. I'm going to just kind of follow how it was sewn on the piece. So I know I can start sewing the yoke together at the back. I'm going to stitch, overlock, and then fold it over and top stitch. And then the pockets, I'm going to overlock all the edges and then fold down the top one and um, stitch that down and then put that onto the back piece. The waistband, I'm going to stitch it so that it becomes a circle, so that's just a straight stitch. I'm not going to overlock it because it will end up being inside the garment. The back piece, I'm going to overlock the fly and then I'm also going to stitch the fly. So where I'm overlocking is along the raw edge, but where I'm stitching is along this front here where it will fold over and then down along the curve. So that one's a little bit of a trickier one. That's gonna, I'm going to have to straighten that out a little bit when I put it into the overlocker um, and then stitch down as well. And then that I'm going to fold to the side and top stitch so it has that fly finish. And the little pocket pieces, I'm just going to overlock the edges so that then they can be attached to this with this edge folded under nicely and sitting neatly. So I'm pretty much just, I'm not going to show too much of the process of putting this together because this is really going to vary depending on the garment you're basing it off. And that's where it's important to have a look at your garment, have a look at how things were put together. So I can see the pocket needed to be attached before the side seam. I can see that all of this top edge, the pocket, the yoke, the fly, all needed to be complete before the waistband was put on. So that's most likely the last step. Looking at the crotch, I can see that the main seam is this one, which means that the crotch was sewn separately and then the inseam was sewn. Some pants will do this the other way around, where the inseams are sewn and then the crotch is sewn all at one. So this is kind of a point of difference for a lot of pants. So just having a look at it, I can kind of see because of the way the fabrics have been overlapped, how they've been put together, the order they've been put together. Um, and yeah, and obviously I need to do the pocket fold over before I can attach to the final garment. Um, I need to do the yoke before I can attach the side seams or the back crotch. So there's a few things, sorry, I need to do the um, yoke crotch and then the back crotch before attaching the yoke and then I can do the side seams. So it's kind of a bit of just looking at it and piecing together which way it goes together. Ultimately, as long as it all ends up together, in a coherent way um, it should fit regardless but this will just give it the most accurate look to the original garment as possible so I'm gonna go ahead and do that like I said I'm not really going to show much of that just because it's probably not that relevant if you're going to be using a different garment which you will be um, so yeah you just need to look at how the pieces were sewn together on your original garment um, if you ever need any help with these things, then feel free to message me on Instagram. Um, I'm on there pretty regularly, so um, I'm always happy to help out with any sewing advice or anything that you need. So I'm going to go and sew this together. Okay, so my camera died. Um, not that I really was showing anything important. It was just me sitting at the machine finishing this off. So I've got pretty much everything done. The legs are all sewn up. I've got the front and back looking good. The last thing is the waistband. So I've got the waistband piece ready. Um, I've stitched this seam and then I've just top stitched it along there as well because that's um, what they've done here and then they've lined that up with the fly so it looks like it's overlapping even though it's not. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do is add the elastic. So they've actually stitched the elastic onto the waistband and then attached the waistband. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to lay this elastic on the inside lining the top edge with the halfway mark so that when this is folded in half it sits flat. So to do this I've made the elastic a little bit smaller 
than um, what is probably comfortable. I'm using quite a soft elastic um, and it sits a little bit smaller than the waist. This will overlap about two centimeters. So it sits a little bit smaller than the waistband um, and I'm gonna stretch it on when I sew it and it will also stretch out a little bit because I'm sewing directly onto it. So that's why it's important to make it a little bit tighter than you would like because we're going to be stitching over it it'll end up stretching out just a little bit and what they've done is they've done a neat finish on the inside with the um, waistband being attached and then the front being folded up and over probably gonna do the same thing because I think it's a really nice um, finish for it um, and yeah so I'm going to go ahead and do that now and then I'll add the button and I'll be done helper joining me now <laughs> all right so I finished off the waistband and now I'm just going to add the button so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of these heavy-duty snap buttons so these buttons usually consist of four pieces um, piece that goes two pieces go at the bottom two pieces go at the top and then they snap together but all I'm going to be using is just the top piece, which has the cap, which is decorative, and then the underside, which is quite flat because it's usually what houses the snap that goes inside. So I got these matte black ones off Etsy. Um, I'm going to use those. So usually the bottom, you have a bottom piece which looks a little bit like this, and it has this bit which has a prong. It's kind of small, so it's hard to see, and then this bit which is the cap which goes on top like that and then the top piece has this cap and then the kind of socket or the female piece for the male piece to snap into so I'm just going to be applying those top two okay so I'm going to make a hole where I want the bottom to go with an awl so I want it to sit pretty central just in here so this is going to go through the elastic layer it's going to go through quite a few layers so it might take a little bit of work and then poke this through too. And then this snap on the other side. And then I've got these pliers. You can also do these with um, hammer as well. It depends on the tool um, kit that you use. They should, each brand should have their own tool. And there we go. And then that looks like a proper pair of pants. Nice and stretchy still. So yeah, I'm gonna try these on, show you how they look on. Okay, so I'm done. I hope that I gave you some tips on how to take a um, ready-to-wear garment and then convert it into a pattern and then sew it up yourself. Um, it's a really handy thing to know how to do, especially once you already know quite a bit of sewing knowledge and pattern knowledge. Um, it really is good to get something that you'd love to wear. For me, these pants are just super comfy and look a little bit nicer than leggings, but still just as comfortable as leggings and turn them into your own garment out of your own clothing, um, your own fabric, sorry. So yeah, I'm really happy with how these turned out. I'll insert some footage of me wearing them here. Um, they're super comfy, really nice elastic waist, which is still super stretchy and comfy, which is really the goal of these pants. Um, I like that they have all the finishes that make them look like their proper pants with the button and the faux fly and front pockets, but they still have the comfort of a legging and um, the practicality of, you know, wearing something super comfortable. So yeah, I'm really excited with how these turned out. Also, please excuse my slippers in the um, footage of me trying them on. That's just what I wear when I'm sewing. And yeah, um, I hope that you like this video. If you have any questions, leave them down below or feel free to message me on Instagram. I'm always over there as well. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for watching. Bye.